Good morning, church family. I hope and pray that this finds you well. We want each of you to know that we long to see you. We've so appreciated the words and notes of encouragement so many have sent over the past weeks. I trust that no matter what your circumstances or situations are, that you are reminded of the real reasons that we have to give thanks in everything and to be always rejoicing for the gift of being in Christ. I'm so amazed by the timeless relevance of God's word in speaking to our responses during a time like this. Responses are an immensely important part of communication. We often speak of worship as our response to truth about God. That is a very important response. Well, our worshipful responses don't need to be limited to a corporate worship setting. We should be responding to truth about God, really, on a daily, even a moment-by-moment basis. And that involves not only how we respond to circumstances, but also how we respond to one another. We've already talked about our response to our current circumstance in this very confusing time. And I'd like to take a few minutes today to talk about our response to one another, mainly within the home. Let's take a look at the first five verses of Proverbs chapter 15. These verses have helped me to think through my responses, and I hope they will be an encouraging exhortation to you as well. Proverbs 15, verses 1 through 5. The writer says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. Most of us are spending more time at home right now than normal. Possibly you are working from home or are home due to a layoff or furlough from work. Many of us have kids at home as well that would normally be at school. Some of us are just at home more than usual because going out is really discouraged as we try to observe safer at home restrictions to keep infections from spreading. Some of you may know that I normally get up at about 3.30 in the morning on Mondays and Tuesdays. I do that in order to get up to open the YMCA and greet members who come in from 4.30 to 8 o'clock in the morning. Honestly, it is something I love to do. It gets me plugged into the community and it provides a little extra retirement savings for us. Of course, with COVID-19, that is something I haven't been able to do for the past month and a half. On the one hand, I really miss the interaction and my 403B is probably going in the wrong direction. But on the other hand, I've really enjoyed the extra sleep. I get to make and drink my own coffee here at home, saving me a little bit. Being at home those mornings, though, lets me greet my children, occasionally cook breakfast for them, and interact with one of our neighbors who we're helping out with. It also lets me get my day started a little sooner by answering emails and preparing for a day of working from home. One thing I've really enjoyed about working at home is being able to do more stuff in the kitchen. I especially enjoy cooking. It is such a break from my normal routine that it really affords me an opportunity to love and serve my family without it really feeling like work at all. You may also know that my wife April gives a number of music lessons here from our home. With COVID-19 social distancing, those have mostly turned into video call and tele-lessons. I'm thankful to say April has adapted quite nicely to the change. This is good because while I'm working from home, I'm still able to be aware of what April's normal day is like, and that has really helped me grow in my appreciation for what she does on a regular basis, something I too easily lose sight of if I'm not careful and observant and aware. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not all sunshine and rainbows at the Roth House. We are thankful that our teenagers work pretty well independently on their schoolwork. 
even still, we have the issues of guarding screen time, regulating video games, resolving personality conflicts, and sharing house chores. If you're anything like us, those issues have the potential to become explosive if we aren't guarding ourselves and living out the gospel's work in our lives. I'm sure you know that being at home more than usual can produce a number of different dynamics in our relationships and situations, and it is good for us to be on guard about those things. Something I've observed in spending extended time with the people I love is this. When there's not the normal separation or the break from one another, there is the potential to cause some friction or at least expose some deficiencies or areas of work needed in our relationship. While we are working through some of those things, this topic that that the writer of Proverbs speaks of here, that a soft answer turns away wrath, is really a very helpful reminder to us. Now, let's not mistake soft and gentle with quiet. Just because I'm not yelling doesn't mean I'm speaking gently. And I can say a gentle thing, even yelling down the street. We can still say hard and unkind, harsh words in a quiet voice. The first point the writer makes under this topic of speaking gently is that gentle words encourage learning. When he says, the tongue of the wise commends knowledge. Many of us are helping our children do schoolwork at home. While not unusual to some of you who do school at home on a regular basis, there may be a different dynamic if a second parent is added to the mix. Either way, there can be real frustrations trying to explain concepts of math and language to our children. Combine that then with no extracurricular activities and no school drive time, and our kids have extra time that needs to be occupied. We probably don't want that being filled with constant screen time or video gaming, but sometimes addressing and regulating those things can be a challenge as well. Being wise about how we speak into that is important. So we need to hear these words that the tongue of the wise commends or encourages knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. Let's work at finding areas to encourage our children and others to be learning and growing during this period, but then also giving some space and grace to enjoy some of the downtime as well. This general truth is also helpful in sorting through facts and opinions during this crisis. Secondly, under this topic of speaking gently, it's important for us to remember, as verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. God hears, he sees, and he knows, if we are speaking gently. Now, there are certainly other applications for us here as well, especially if we go back to the idea of downtime. There can be the tendency for us to isolate ourselves from others, even in our own homes. And there are times this can bring some real added temptation. Screens can be very private places, and we think that no one sees what we do on them. The truth that the eyes of the Lord are in every place is incredibly relevant. God is watching all of us. That truth isn't just intended to reassure us that God knows what the wicked are doing. He does. He also knows everything we are doing, and we are accountable. God is watching what we say, verbally and virtually. And we should ask ourselves, is it gentle? I found that speaking gently can even be a challenge when I'm trying to do a video conference call or a meeting at home or record a devotional. Finding the right place to do that can be tricky. A full house lived in 24-7 isn't always afforded the opportunity to stay as cleaned up as we might like. Additionally, 
Keeping little or big mouths quiet for an extended period of time can be challenging. Then there's the challenge of using a shared bedroom space for the quiet and privacy that someone else has access to in that space as well. You've no doubt heard or seen those who didn't do it well or had other hilariously embarrassing issues along the way. If you don't think that that can cause turbulence in a relationship, guess again. Some of us may find ourselves saying, as nice as it is to have you at home all day, I think we might need a little break from each other. Hopefully, this causes us to grow in our relationship and our love and appreciation for one another, and maybe even gives us extra valuable time to spend together. However, the reality is that there is probably more of a tendency to speak harshly to one another if we aren't careful. When unfortunate situations like the ones I mentioned previously take place, the writer's words here in verse 4, a gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit, is a helpful exhortation for us. Kids, many of you are missing your teachers, coaches, and friends from church, school, and sports. Can I encourage you to embrace and enjoy having your parents as a greater part of your time during the day? They may not, might not have the same way of teaching and instructing as your favorite coach or teacher, but the words of the writer here are important in verse 5, where he says, A fool despises his father's or his parents' instruction. Don't despise or turn away from your parents' instruction or teaching. Whether it is something you're learning in a book academically or something you are learning from their wisdom and life experience, heed or take to heart and obey what they are telling you. Maybe you're listening to me this morning and few or none of these scenarios is true for you. Well, good for you. These verses are likely still very relevant for you in other ways. And what's even better, you can pray for the rest of us that these truths would be helpful for us. Trust me, we need it. So Proverbs 15 verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read them again. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, and the mouths of fools pour out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. So, quickly summarizing the truths for us today. Speaking gently, we're reminded of four things. Gentle words encourage learning. Factual, documented truth is always better than opinion. Be careful where you get your information. Sometimes, no answer can be the best gentle answer, and there are those who simply pour out folly and will not listen. We can rest in the fact that God hears, He sees, and He knows about them. Thirdly, gentle words tend toward growth. And last of all, gentle words should be received, heeded, and taken to heart. Thanks for spending this time with me today. I hope you have a great Friday. Have a good and a godly day.